in this episode of the Short Vol Show Live. We will be checking out a tone shift in the VIX that's happened recently, and we'll be examining what that means. And um, we'll also talk about the term structure and all kinds of other things to do with VIX coming up right now on the Short Vol Show Live. You're watching Famous Day. All right, thank you for that, and welcome to uh, the show today. And as I said in the intro, we have had sort of a tone shift in the VIX over the last, I'd say, week. You can feel it, can't you? Um, we were in this period for a couple months where it, like the, the VIX just kept coming in and coming in and coming in, and we got down to 11 and change in the VIX. And then, um, you know, last week stuff started to really kind of change and we saw a pop um, with a sell-off, which usually come together. Usually the VIX is down when there's a sell-off. We saw a pop and a sell-off. Uh, and ever since then, the tone has been different. Contango has actually been falling uh, in the term structure. Yesterday, we had a very interesting day where, yeah, the market was down a little bit, but the VIX really popped. It was up two points. Uh, we saw buyers in VIX options on futures, uh, and correspondingly, the VVIX up a bunch. And um, things were not looking good at about six this morning either. Uh, between four and five in the morning, I think it is. Let me refresh my memory by looking at a chart here. But we had stuff sell off, uh, and then we had. I believe a delay in the tariffs that made stuff rally again. But take a look at the action here earlier this morning. Let me get out of the way. And you can see, you know, I woke up at the crack of dawn and you can see, yeah, right after six here, really the sell off, real action going on, right? So we had that between two and three, we had the sell off. Then right before six, and then this huge rally before the open, uh, which has. Uh, then a sell-off right after the open and then rally sort of back, which is kind of hung in there. Um, and corresponding, the VIX has moved a little lower this morning. But uh, if we take a look at the VIX action here, and let's play with our studies and overlay the VIX on top of this chart here. So we're going to go to uh, add study and then compare with the VIX. And this is gonna, you're gonna see just a really strong, relatively VIX yesterday compared with the market. Um, we saw a little bit of a sell off, but really just a big pop yesterday. Let me go back to a five day chart here. And um, it doesn't show that well, does it? Let's see. Well, here's the sell off yesterday. Uh, and the VIX, just a big pop. Now, relative to other sell-offs, this was a very big pop in the VIX, up two points with really the uh, E-mini's not down very much, uh, which is kind of a warning sign to people. And corresponding to that, in the term structure, we could see uh, the spot VIX price actually moving above the futures price, and the, the, the term structure really f starting to flatten out and um, feeling pressure to the upside. That shock absorber that we talk about in the VIX a lot, fully compressed, you know, you've got that shock absorber. Once it compresses, then the uh, everything is forced to move higher on even a small move because you no longer have that, that give in the term structure. And that's kind of what happened uh, yesterday. Let's take a look now at the term structure and see where we are as of right now live now let me uh, get out of the way here once again and um we can see as i pull this down to full size here that um and let's see if we can actually bring this up so you can see it a little bit better um still the spot above the december future and that to me means 
the fact that these these futures have stayed below spot for a little while here means that there is some sort of anticipation on the minds of futures guys of this spot moving back down lower again soon. Usually, um, they leave the stuff there because they figure, you know, not to really chase spot up because then they're just going to be chasing it back down. So, uh, the current structure where you see December below spot in my opinion, is just because these futures guys are not interested in buying a higher and higher future right now. Um, so you can see Contango is still over 10%. Now, this is significant here that we're over 10% because um, that is a big number. And what's happened is, and what usually happens is, over a time period, if you've got a, a, a level of Contango and a a rallying market over a time period, um, Contango builds and builds. And thus, we had that tone shift last week, but it this stuff moves more slowly than just, uh, you know, on a dime switching Contango level. So we see this Contango level of 10% here. Now that is off from the 16% we had two weeks ago, but uh, that position between those two futures still having a very steep level of contango, and that uh, has stayed here, um, which is significant to me because in the past you would see that relationship between decent Jan or the two front month futures, let's call it, flatten out uh, more quickly with a move up in volatility. And um, I like to see contango steeper because I have a long term short on, but. Um, it is uh, significant that it has stayed like that. And I think that, to me, that speaks to uh, to a, a, a viewpoint uh, in, in the, uh, from the futures guys that this rally is not over and that we're going to stay, uh, continue to rally from here. Uh, now, let me stress once again what we say over and over again. The term structure is not predictive. So... You look at a term structure, you look at, you, you can't say like, oh, well, some level of contango means we're going to rally. Some level means we're going to sell off. This doesn't predict the future. It just tells where we are right now. But where we are right now is, uh, it, from this structure, tells me that we're in a, just a blip sell off in a continuing to rally market. Um, that's what the term structure tells me right now. Now, why does it tell me we're in a sell-off? Because there's no room between spot and the front month future. In fact, the relationship is inverted. The roll yield is inverted in that spot is higher than the front month future. Now, let's just go back to the live uh, screen just to re-verify that. But I've got VIX 1580 here and the front month future 1540. So, you know, are now 1535. So, um, 45 cents between spot and the future. It just clicked down, it just ticked down. However, um, that is, um, means that we're in the midst of at least a mini spike here. However, the level of contango that we continue to hold tells me that people are not super worried about this uh, little sell-off here. And indeed, if, if you want perspective, um, all the time when I'm looking to get perspective on something, you're in the middle of something and it's kind of like you're on the ground level. You want to get up off the ground, get higher up in the air and get some perspective. The best way to do that is to back your charts out. So let's back out to a year chart here in the E-minis. Back out to your chart and all of a sudden, look, we're in the midst of a huge rally right here. And the that little blip hasn't really broken that down. And I think that that level of contango over 10% just reflects the fact that we are in the midst of this rally. Now, if this, you know, if we had sold off down to like where we did in May here or something, you would see a different term structure. But just a little bit off the highs, uh, they A, keep things in contango, and B, when we get a little pop in the spot, the futures guys are unfazed by it and they let the futures go below the price of spot without chasing. And necessarily chasing the VIX higher here uh, aggressively. Let's go to the uh, chat room for a second. Hey, what's up, SD Investing? What kind of position do you have on SEP 2020? All right, well, um, here I can show it to you right now. 
And uh, maybe I should, let me just briefly, really quickly go on stock twits here and just say that I'm live so that people, if they want to come and participate, they can. Uh, it'll take me two seconds. My Essentially, my position as I'm doing this is I am long um, out of the money puts, and it's a pretty aggressive position. Let me just, uh, I'm just going to come on here and say I'm live, UVXY. Um, but I like it. I'm live on YouTube now, and then let me just give my YouTube address. Um, I have a pretty aggressive position on right now um, because I have a long time for it. And I don't necessarily, uh, the way my position is, I don't we don't necessarily need to get to the strikes that I'm long for it, for it to work. Um, but let's take a look specifically at the position. I'm going to go down here to... Um, VXX, and I can get my little close-up here so you can look at a close-up of this so you can see it. I know that some of the times this is stuff is small to see like on a phone or something, so let me put the close-up on for a second. I got to get rid of some of these. I've got all of these different screens on my editor here. I got to get rid of some of them. Anyways, here's a close-up, and let's move the close-up to... Uh, over the spot that we're looking at here. So there we go. Um, and we can see the position. So there's a so there's a position. I am long 103 of the step eight puts and 78 of the step nine puts. So um, if we were to go and look at move up here just slightly and take a look. Uh, I'm going to pull up the Analyze tab now here, and we can look at our Greeks for this position. And it's showing us short uh, 1,200 deltas here. Um, and down 10%, short 1,700 deltas. Um, however, and I'm actually going to back this out a little bit so that it's not so huge. Um, however, if this is a position, they're out of the money put. So as we get as we go lower, that delta is going to increase. The gamma is going to increase. Everything is going to increase uh, a lot. So here we go. I just decreased this so it kind of fits the uh, screen a little bit better. Let me just make it a teeny bit bigger. Okay, so um, as we move down, the, these deltas are going to build. And also, as we move out in time, the, the, these puts are going to uh, decay, of course, and the delta up here is not very meaningful. So if I was to hedge this right here and we were to slowly walk lower, if I was just to buy, say, 1,000 shares of VXX against this position here and we were to slowly walk lower, I would get crushed because the... Uh, if we never make it to the puts, then whatever I bought against them is just going to go against me while as the put value is slowly going to go down as well. So I see this delta here and I'm just, I'm okay with it, but I'm not going to hedge stuff uh, against this delta here because the whole, the whole point of the position is to be shorting volatility. So I don't really want to hedge the delta. Otherwise that, th that turns it into something else. However, let's move. Um, if I click on this downside here and we look, for like a 30 or 40 percent move all of a sudden you see well if this goes down 43 percent then i make twenty two thousand dollars and all of a sudden we're short 5800 deltas you know if this gets closer to strike then maybe we want to start you know either just selling out some of the puts selling doing some we want to do something against it to lock in some profitability but i mean this is like i said an aggressive position we need VXX to go down like 30-40% in the next nine months for um, maximum profitability. Now, that, that might sound crazy to think that this could go down 40% uh, in nine months, but with levels of contango of 10%, that means things are decaying by 10% um, per month. And so it, it seems more reasonable when you look at it that way. I um, hope that helps a little bit. 
from Man Accounts. Why so far out in time? So far out in time because I wanted to uh, try something different. A. B. I want to uh, give myself an opportunity to weather any sort of spikes that come. But C. I just found this option this dollar cheap. I mean, the, the eight puts are. Uh, I got into around 28 cents. So it's so dollar cheap and it gives us enough time that like if we were to stay at over 10% contango, which I, I think is very unlikely. I'm long puts, man, it counts. Um, the decay, when you pay 28 cents for an option that's nine months out, the decay per day is you know less than a cent for each one of those options. Now, obviously the decay is going to get higher if we move towards strike, but... Um, um, it, it seems very unlikely to me that we'll stay above 10% contango. But in the event that we do, this position could uh, be very, very profitable. Uh, so I'm net, man accounts, I'm net long um, puts, and I'm long the, um, I'm long the SEP 8 puts, and I'm long the SEP 10 puts. Um, SEP 8 puts, I'm long 103. SEP 10 puts, I'm long 78. And so it is a um, just naked long puts position. However, um, worrying about decay that far out, it's showing the whole uh, position costing $37 a day, which is not insignificant. Um, and my feeling with this position is if we can stay, if we continue to rally like we have been and we can stay in this really steep contango for like a month or two, then that's going to go a long way towards making this position profitable. So it's kind of a longer term thing. Um, I, um, it saves me commissions if I can put a short on that's longer term and I don't have to like, uh, so realistically, when would you want to take this position off? Yeah. So, I mean, if you pay, 30, you know, 28, 25 cents for some puts, um, I would be looking to double my money on this. So buy puts for 28 cents, sell them for 60 cents or 80 cents. Um, I would start, I would either, there's a couple options. One is to just sell the puts out when they go up in value. Another is to sell like another month against them. So I buy September for 30 cents each. Let's just say for a rounded number. Well, if things move way lower, what if I can sell April for 30 cents against it, finance the whole position that way, and then just leave them on? That would be awesome. Another thing to possibly do would be to, okay, I bought the SEP 8 puts for 30 cents. What if I can sell the SEP 7 puts for 30 cents against them? Then I've got a free position on. So I haven't really thought Maybe I should have thought more. I haven't really thought about where I want to take the position off. I I, I look more at like what's my risk uh, with this position, and the the risk is that we just stay uh, that Contango goes down to nothing. You know, Contango of like two percent or even worse, uh, negative. I don't see a Contango staying negative for long, but Contango of like two three percent will never get anywhere near near there. Uh, essentially this purchase call. So you mean purchase, why not purchase calls, uh, in, uh, the SPX or something? Is that what you mean, Maneep? Buying calls in, uh, in, in this one obviously would be, uh, uh, the reason why not to buy call. Yeah. I mean, you could buy calls in the SPX, uh, just as a, uh, a play in the market rallying. Certainly, that would be a, a similar thing. Um, this is a uh, a strategy that could actually make. Uh, yeah, you could sell calls in this also. Um, that would be a similar thing. Um, selling calls, you are limited how much you can make by um, how much you sell the calls for. A and B. If you're short calls in a volatility product, you have some risk on uh, as far as if there's a spike. Um, so you probably wouldn't want to do that. Um, yeah, you could you could buy um, you could buy SPX calls, of course. That's that's another strategy that uh, takes advantage of a rising market. Um, I just see this as a sort of a leverage deal where um, 
you buy something that's dollar cheap, an option for under a dollar, um, and uh, you know, sort of the sky's the limit potentially of uh, how much money you could make from it. Uh, well, the sky's not the limit. You buy a put on something, the lowest it can go to is zero, of course. So it's not an uh, unlimited possibility type trade. However, um, it's something that you, I can put on, just sort of babysit uh, over time. It's kind of like if you're sports betting and you bet the over-under, if you take the over, um, you if you take the over in a game, like let's say you say the over-under is 40 points in a football game, you take the over and all of a sudden they score a lot of points early on, then you can have you can have won your bet before the game's even like, you know, halfway over potentially. Um same thing with this trade. If you if you um you buy these way out of the money puts, if we stay in contang high contango for a couple months now and this thing rolls down to like thirteen twelve, then you can take the trade off. Uh, it's not like you have to wait out the till next September to to be profitable. You could take the trade off really early. However, if you know if market has uh, some more volatility, then maybe you have to wait uh, farther. Maybe you have to wait until next summer to take the trade off. But either way, um, I'm giving myself a long time to be right. Um, and yeah, if things if the stars align in a certain way, then I could take this trade off for a, a big profit in a couple months. Um, but if things don't go as well, I'm giving myself time to be wrong. So that's kind of uh, where we are on that one. Um, but yeah, the market feels different now um, a little bit. That that was very strange yesterday. That um, that expansion of volatility and i don't know if it was due to the uh just the tariff deadline coming up and uh there being nervousness over that um but people were definitely bidding stuff up now when people come in and bid up the vix and bid stuff up if nothing happens somebody's left holding the bag and right now nothing's happening now we have obviously days to go and uh but you know volatility has expanded here that means Somebody somewhere out there is buying options. Somebody out there thinks something's going to happen, stuff's going to move, and they've bought options. Now, that's either going to work or that's not going to work. And if it doesn't work, uh, somebody's going to get left holding the bag, and this stuff is going to come back in uh, with a vengeance, so to speak. So we'll have to see what happens. Um, if you are somebody who's actively shorted these volatility products, you know, you haven't made a ton of money in the last couple of weeks because VXX has basically gone from 1610 back up to 1746. However, don't be disheartened because this whole time we've stayed in contango of over 10%. So this stuff is decaying. What do I mean by that? Well, uh, VXX now is 1750 with the VIX 1572. Uh, a month ago, the VIX could have been a point lower and VXX would have been 1750. A month from now, if we stay in steep contango, the VIX could go up to like 1680 uh, or 17 with VXX still being 1750. So VXX's level compared with the VIX or com uh, compared with VIX futures is slowly moving lower basis any, any spot you want to peg it. So for example, two months ago, VIX 16, VXX might have been 20. Uh, now, VIX 16, VXX is 1750. So, yeah, yes, the price of VXX has moved up over the last couple of weeks, but it hasn't moved. But compared with what the VIX has done, it's lagged behind the VIX. And if we were to move back down to 11 again now, VXX would be lower than that low of 1610. So, uh, VXX is losing ground compared with the VIX as time goes by, as long as we stay in that steep contango. So for my position, um, I see the VIX going up. I see VXX moving higher. I'm not worried because, as like I said, once again, as long as we stay in that steep contango, um, VXX is losing ground compared with everything else. And yeah, the VIX is going to go up and down, but as long as these products are losing ground, uh, in the end, the short is going to work. So that's kind of the way I, I see things right now. 
Um, I appreciate all the comments. I, I was not able to come on last night, but that's okay. Um, so let's look once again. And I want to go over um, just some basic strategies for, um, for trading UVXY and VXX for shorting volatility. Let's look at UVXY really quickly and look at a trade you might want to put on. Like let's say that you are watching today, you have no position, and you're saying, well, um, you know, volatility is up over the last couple of days. We've gone from an 11 VIX to a 15 VIX, which to me doesn't seem all that high, but you know, it's on the higher side from where it's been. Maybe you would want to initiate a short volatility trade. Well, what options do you have? What looks good on the chart right now for me? And what would I do? Um, and I would probably look out to February. February would be a month that I would probably be interested in in trading UVXY uh, right now. The, this due to the fact that January is only 38 days away. That doesn't really give me enough time. I put a short vol trade on now in January. We get a pop and all of a sudden I'm just a loser and I, you know, I'm just stuck as a loser. Uh, but February 73 days, that gives me enough time. So what would I look at? Well, um, first thing you want to do when you're thinking to trade some options on something is check out the open interest. This is going to tell you uh, some, give you some hints about liquidity and stuff. So I'm on um, Thinkorswim application here. And uh, interestingly for our, us TD Ameritrade customers, we keep getting these messages that um, TD Ameritrade and Charles Schwab are merging. Charles Schwab bought TD Ameritrade, uh, but the rumor is that they're definitely going to keep Thinkorswim, which is good because Thinkorswim is a real good application. But um, so on Thinkorswim here, let me move out of the way a little bit. Um, I'm going to go to, I'm on the trade tab and then I'm under all products. Then I have UVXY up here now and I'm under options chain. And if I go to the middle of the screen on the top here, there's a section that says size, bid, ask, the price, position. Yours might say something different, but it's right to the right of single. If I click on that, this is going to list a bunch of options for the way I can view my options screen. There's um, these ones that they give you, um, the default options, and then you can create your own under this customized tab. Um, so we're going to look now at the one that says volume open interest. So I click on that. And on the far left side of the screen, on the far left side of this option screen here, you're going to see uh, these numbers. And this is the, the volume for today in these options. And then the next line over is going to be the open interest. So open interest means that um, how many outstanding contracts there are. So options, unlike, um, let's say, widgets or actual products, Options, um, you can sell somebody an option without owning it first. Since an option is a contract, you're basically making a deal with somebody saying that I will give you the right to buy a call at a certain price. Um, and so without actually owning anything, you can sell an option to somebody. The only requirement is that you put up money to... Um, guarantee that you'll be able to fulfill that obligation and the screen will tell you how much money you need to put up but um so open interest usually starts with zero when they list a month and then this number here shows how many people have sold somebody one of these options so if if it just in a vacuum somebody sells somebody 200 calls it's going to show open interest of 200 the next day if if the same person comes back back and um, and uh, sells the calls that they bought the day before to the exact same person, then the open interest will go back to zero uh, because the, all the obligations are closed. However, you could have um, one day somebody comes in and buys 200 calls from somebody, and the next day that person turns around and takes 50 of those calls and sells them back but to somebody else then the open interest still will stay at 200. The volume will be 50. So this kind of keeps track of um, how many contracts are currently open. Now, those contracts could be closed 
Um, but if they're not close to the exact same person that they were open with, then that open interest is still out there. It's just been transferred to somebody else. So, um, but in this case, we're using open interest and volume just to give us an idea of how easily it will be to trade these options, how liquid they are. In this case, you can see 2000 in February. This stuff is not very liquid. So you want to be careful with trading it um, because a lot of times with not very liquid products, what happens is they're going to make it easy for you to, uh, to initiate a trade, to get in. But when you try to get out, they're going to make it hard for you. So you don't want to be stuck in that situation. And certainly with volatility products, you want to be careful. You want to uh, get your feet wet trading some very small trades to get used to the mechanics of how these things work. Um, all that being said, so let's say you've gotten used to the mechanics of all, how all these things work. Let's look at some trades to uh, short volatility uh, in UVXY here. So, um, you know, the VIX is higher than it's been. Let's pull up the VIX really quickly here and see where we are. All right, so we're on kind of an upturn here. You can see in November, we're, we're near the highs in November, right? Um, you can say volatility is in a mid range, though, here as far as like historically with the VIX. It's kind of in a middle zone, but we are higher than we have been for most of October. So um, it doesn't seem to me like this is a super, super clear sale. Um, but when you throw in the fact that Contango is decaying things, then um, selling a volatility ETP seems like a good idea. Just If you could just trade the VIX specifically, this would be a mid-range. So I wouldn't want to do anything too big on either side, buy or sell. But the fact that these VIX ETPs decay so much makes this possibly a decent sale. Um, if nothing happens, then the VIX is probably going to go back down. And even if the VIX just stays at 15, the contango rate in these ETPs will make them decay. So let's just speculate that you've determined that you want to sell some volatility here for whatever reasons. I'm not endorsing that. I'm not saying that's a good idea or a bad idea, but let's say that's what you want to do. I would pick probably February in uh, UVXY to trade, and I might pick something like the February 2030 call spread, okay? Um, so um, let's queue up a trade. So we, we might want to sell the Feb 20 call and buy the Feb, let's say 25 call for now, 25 call. All right, so it's showing the midpoint of this trade being 70 cents. So what are we doing here? There's different ways of looking at what we're doing here, and I'd encourage you to look at it several different ways. Now it just switched to 70 cents. So this is a $5 spread. So each time you sell it, the worst thing that could happen to you selling one of these spreads is at expiration, UVXY is over 25. And this thing's this spread's worth 500 bucks. So if you sell one of these spreads in the midpoint right now for 70 cents, you're basically um, you you collect 70 dollars right now for each spread. But if the most you can lose is that 500 dollars, the 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 distance between the two strikes between 20 and 25 is five. So $500 minus what you sold it for. So $500 minus 70 cents is $430. So you're basically risking on this trade here, you're risking $430 to make $70. Now in the face of itself, that doesn't sound so great, right? Now the reason why the odds are not, or, or the reason why you only get $70, you have to risk $430 just to get $70 is the likelihood of this trade working for you is is very high. Um, it's 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 pretty darn likely that UVXY will be below twenty in seventy three days. Uh, and there's a number of reasons for that, but um, the screen is giving it a likelihood. How can we tell that? Well, by the price of it, for one thing, but we can also look at the delta of the options involved. So, if we go back to the top of our screen here, where we picked that volume open interest. Uh, right next to where it says single here again, we can go and we can click and we can pick the screen that shows delta gamma theta vega here. So let's click that. So this first line is going to be delta. And so if we look across from those February 
20 calls that we sold that we were looking at. We were looking at selling the 2025 call spread. So, um, and uh, this is showing a 45 delta for that for that call, and it's showing for the 25 call a 33 delta. So, um, let's just examine the, the 25 call first here. So, there's a 33 delta. It shows 0.33 here. Um, and you can look at that in terms of percent. You can look at that in terms of uh, hedge ratio. If you were to sell one of these calls, if you wanted to, to trade the trade delta neutral, if you were to sell one of these calls, you would buy 33 shares of stock against it to hedge it delta neutral. But the, the, the definition of delta we're using right now is what's the percentage chance of this option finishing in the money on expiration? So 33 delta means that the stock market, the world, the sum total of everybody trading this uh, is giving this a 33% chance of UVXY being at or above 25 on expiration. So that means that the chance of um, this being below 25 is 100 minus 33 or 66.6. .6. So there's a two-thirds chance that UVXY is going to be below 25 on expiration. That's one of the reasons why this spread is um, is uh, you know worth what it is, and it's also why this spread is likely to work. Um, if we look at the 20 call, it's given it's assigning the 20 call a 45 delta. Thus. Uh, if you subtract 45 from 100, you get 55. Thus, there's a 55% chance that UVXY will be below, uh, at or below 20 on expiration in February, and thus this spread will have maximum value. So um, you can use these uh, the, these deltas uh, to talk about the chances of stuff happening in regular stocks as well. So, for example, if I were to look at Apple. Oops, I did Apple wrong. A A P L. If you were to look at Apple options, um, and somebody might, you know, in in stock twist, somebody might come up to you and say, "Apple's definitely going to be above 300 in March." There's a hundred percent chance that Apple will be above 300 in March. It's, it's definitely going to be higher. You can you can say to them with confidence, no, the market's only giving it a twenty percent chance that Apple will be above three hundred in March. And the way you know that is you just look at the delta of the call. Somebody might say, you know, what's the chance of Apple going to two hundred uh, in the next hundred days? Well, you, you can go right to your uh, your chart here and say, well, there's only a five percent chance that Apple's going to be below two hundred in in 100 days. That's what the market's giving it, only a 5% chance. And when you look at Apple, it's 269. It seems like there'd be more than a 5% chance that it was lower than that. But this is what the market is giving it. This is the sum total of a lot of smart people. Uh, and generally, options pricing, especially in something like the SPX, the indices, is, is pretty darn accurate. Um, but that is the way we can use delta to figure out the odds of something. So let's go back to UVXY. So I like something like this spread um, that I just showed you. And I'm going to go back to trade products, options chain, February. So let's, let's look at the spread one more time. If I was to sell the 20 call, so what I'm doing is I'm clicking on the bit of the 20 call, then I'm holding down control and clicking on the offer of the 25 call. All right, now it's showing it the midpoint being 72 cents. Now, generally with spreads like this in something like UVXY, um, you can usually trade them somewhere close to the midpoint. Um, but if I were you, before I put a spread on like this, I would follow, I would not only um, follow this for a little bit because the midpoint is not always really the fair value of what it's worth. Sometimes they manipulate things or there's a book in in here somewhere. If somebody is bidding for a one lot in these February 20 calls, all of a sudden it's going to it's going to move the midpoint. So 
ways you can check to see if this is a reasonable midpoint is you could just switch months and see what what's happening in different months here. So June, it's showing a dollar three. What I what I did was I went down to my order ticket here and I can just change the month. Um, Jan, look at weeks near it. Jan showing seventy four for the twenty four Jan. Seventeen Jan showing fifty eight. 10 Jan showing 24. Um, when you're dealing with out of the money calls or call spreads, the closer it gets to expiration, the less value it's going to have. So this is kind of funky here. 27 December is showing 39 cents. 3 Jan, well, now it's gone. Now it's showing 45 cents. But 10 Jan is showing 24 cents. So what's up that's making 10 Jan so much cheaper? It, you know, it, if this spread 10 Jan is 24 cents, you would love to buy 10 Jan for 24 cents and sell the 3 Jan spread at 45 cents. Um, that would be a, a great trade if you could put it on. Chances are you can't put it on though. It's just something's funky with these options that's making these 10 Jan ones be out of whack. Um, because um, if you think about it, the closer you get to expiration, the less an out of the money call spread is going to be worth because it's less likely. The less time you have, the less likely it is that UVXY is going to move up through there. There's less time for something to happen that's going to make UVXY pop there. But um, yeah, so I would check out the different months and see how these spreads line up in different months. The other thing you can do is when we when we sell a call spread like this, it is the same thing as buying the put spread on the opposite side. And so if you're selling this call spread at, let's use 70 cents, that's the identical thing as buying the put spread for $4.30. Remember that $4.30 that we saw uh, when we calculated how much you could make or lose? If you subtract, there's $5 between the strikes here. If you subtract our premium here of 70, I'm just using 70 cents. It says 73. I'm using 70 cents as a just a rounded number. If you subtract um, 70 cents from the $5 between the strikes, you get $4.30. So um, selling this call spread at 70 cents is the same thing as buying the put spread paying $4.30. Think about it. If you buy this put spread paying four dollars and thirty cents, the tw the twenty twenty five put spread. If UVXY is below twenty, the put spread will be worth five dollars. If you buy it paying four thirty, um, the most you can make or or what you'll make if, at maximum value is seventy cents. If you pay four thirty, the thing can be worth five. Five minus four thirty is seventy cents. Same thing with the call spread. If you sell the call spread at seventy cents the most you'll make is 70 cents. So when you look at this call spread and you see, okay, well, they're valuing it at 70 cents, go over and see what they're valuing the put spread at. So let's do that. So if I were to buy the 25 put, I'm going to click on the offer. I'm going to hold my control and click on the bid and see where the put spread's valued. The put spread valued at $4.25 in the midpoint, right? So my friends, which would you rather do? Would you rather sell the call spread at 70 cents or would you rather buy the put spread paying 425? There, hint, there's a right answer here. <laughs> I'll give you five seconds. Uh, I can't remember that like game show uh, music for five seconds, but your five seconds is up. Well, you would rather buy the put spread paying 425 because if we buy the put spread paying 425, what are we doing synthetically? Well, there's five dollars between the strikes. Five dollars minus 425 is what? That should be pretty easy math for you. Five dollars minus 425 is 75. So, if you were to buy the put spread paying 425, you would be actually selling the call spread at 75 cents, collecting 75 dollars per per spread is better than collecting seventy dollars thus it's better to buy the put spread paying 425 than sell the call spread at 70 cents and um, if you go ahead and check the put spread it's going to tell you 
if if they're pretty close, which here they're pretty close. So the call spread we were looking at was 73 cents. The put spread was 425, so, which is synthetically 75 cents. So they're only two cents apart. So that's going to generally tell you that the midpoint here is accurate and that um, that this at least is in line with itself internally here. So if, if some of this is uh, going over your head, don't worry about it. Um, hopefully you pick up a little something from this stuff from me. That's my, that's my hope. And if we continue to repeat stuff, uh, you'll, you'll pick up more and more. So I like selling this call spread here in February. Um, the 20 call, you know, it needs to be below 20 in February. The 20 call is $4 out of the money here. So you've already got $4. You can be wrong by $4 in this trade and still get the maximum benefit from it. So I think that's a nice cushion. Um, I'm anticipating UVXY decaying between now and February. Uh, I'm anticipating it going lower between now and, and then. Uh, and if we certainly if we stay in Katango of over 10%, it will. Also, there's other stuff that makes UVXY move lower. That would be beta drift. Now, what could make you at VXY go higher? Well, just a spike in volatility. If volatility, it's certainly reasonable that, that the VIX could move back to, like let's say, a 20 vol and stay there between now and February. That certainly could happen. Um, that wouldn't be unheard of at all. And if this if, you, if uh, the VIX went to 20 and stayed there through February, then this trade probably would not work out for you. Um, and you would either take it off our loss or you'd roll it out farther. But if we look at the chart here, we can see well, VIX 20 is up here. That seems reasonable that it could stay there. Um, it could go higher. I don't see the VIX staying way higher for a long period of time, but we certainly could get a spike like we have at the beginning of this chart here. There's nothing that could prevent that from happening. All right, so I've gone pretty long here today. Um, let me say hi to everybody in the chat here before I leave. Uh, so, all right. So, I'm not, I can't go through all of this, but let's talk for a second about how much, and this is a good question without getting too political. Um, how do you roll a short position? Tom, thanks for asking. Well, you can actually do a roll where you just you have one call spread on and you just roll it out to another month. So, for example, um, you would do a package trade where, let's say, for example, that I was I have this UVXY call spread on. So let's go into our analyze tab here and. Let's say that I ha I sold the 20 call in February and I bought the 25 call. Okay, so I have this up in my analyze tab here. Let's say we did it 40. Uh, let's say we did it 20 times. Well, if you right click on this trade, um, well, if you actually had the trade on, <laughs> you can it it will give you an option to roll the order. So to roll the order, what would you be doing? Well, you'd buy back. So if I wanted to roll this trade right now out another month, it's probably not going to cost me very much because you're just giving yourself another month of, of room. So if this was my position, I wanted to roll it out, what would I do? Let's say I wanted to roll it out to uh, June. Well, I'd need to buy back that 20 call I was short. So I would buy the June 20 call. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I would buy the Feb call. But let's, let's unwind the Feb first. So I'd buy my Feb 20 call back. I would sell the Feb 25 call. So that reverses me out of the position I had on. And then I would go out to June and I would sell the 20 call in June. And I would buy 
the 25 call. And so when I pull that up on the screen right now, it's showing uh, that costing 40 cents to roll that out there to June. That's a couple that, you know, that's a pretty far out roll. And, you know, it costs you a little, but, you know, you have the trade on and it gives you more time. So that's how you would roll it. Um, but let me just get to, uh, I just want to say one more thing before I leave. I, I apologize this has been so long. But um, let's talk just for a second about in the impeachment thing here. Now, you'll notice that the market is not, is not moving just based on politics in the U.S. Sometimes something political happens and the market moves. Sometimes it doesn't. Trying to predict what the market's going to do based on politics is going to get you in a lot of trouble. So I would suggest not doing that. Um, you could, like, let's say, for example, that you knew right now who was going to win the next election. It still wouldn't help you to make money, really. Let's say that you knew that the president was going to be successfully impeached and and you, you predicted that, well, that's bad for the market because um, the Republicans are business friendly and therefore if, if I knew ahead of time that the tr and president's going to be impeached, I should definitely short this market because it's going to collapse. If you get, you know, Elizabeth Warren in there, she's going to, uh, or actually I'm talking about the election now. But, like, let's say you knew that Trump was going to lose the next election and Elizabeth Warren was coming in. Well, if Elizabeth Warren comes in, they're going to tax the rich. They're going to put fees on everybody. And it's going to be awful for the market. It's going to tank. I'm going to short it right now. Doing stuff like that is going to get you in a lot of trouble because you're making so many assumptions and the market generally is not predictable. So trying to... The, trying to make some sort of macro viewpoint on the market and predicting it based on the impeachment and stuff like that, it's going to be very, very difficult. I would stick to um, some of the principles that you learn from different people online to do with the market, but trying to, to make a, a prediction of which way the market's going to go based on your guess of what's going to happen politically is pretty far extrapolated. Um, so... I would avoid that. Um, let's see. Isn't, isn't yeah? It tanked huge amount in the first three or four impeachments. Now the market even snickers. The Moby hair length coefficient. Yes, that's 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 uh, an important um, important indicator. Yeah, I would be careful. Um, it, it is interesting how like. And th there was a little bit of this going on for a while where like every tweet of the president was making the market move and then it was less so. I think now it really just depends on um, the issues at hand. Obviously, the market is very interested in um, any sort of trade deal with China. That's been true for a long time. But what happens with the market as far as, you know, and sort of in my opinion is that, that it changes what it's focused on from day to day. Sometimes it's focused on interest rates and bonds. Other times it's focused on some sort of world event. Other times it's focused on politics. And to be able to predict ahead of time what it's going to be focused on and how to capitalize on that it, it isn't easy. So yes, you could do that and be successful at that and make money, but um, it's not as easy as you think. Anytime that you, you try to say or think that something's going to be easy, you're asking for trouble, in my opinion. Um, anyway, so there's one idea in UVXY. I currently have been sticking to VXX lately just because I feel like UVXY is so thin. Now, UVXY does have the added advantage that because it's a leveraged product, it's going to decay more than VXX um, due to um, certain leverage uh, characteristics of a leveraged ETP, this sort of beta drift we talk about. Um, rebalancing of a leveraged ETP is going to make that the ETP decay. Um, so you get more bang from your buck with UVXY. It's going to decay more than VXX. However, it's hard to get in and out of. There's less liquidity and um, and the, the markets move around a whole lot. So you need to um, really 
focus in and pay attention and look and watch. If you're thinking about putting a trade on UVXY, watch it for several days. See how the markets move around, and that's going to help you with it. Um, we can go into some other ways of shorting volatility, but this has been a long one, so I'm going to let you go uh, for now. I think probably the next video is not going to be a live one. I'm going to try to make something more concise that people can watch really quickly and just jump in on stuff because I know it's hard to, um, you know, it's hard to have like a an hour time to to go down this rabbit hole for people. So, all right, thanks for watching so much. Um, I appreciate you. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. You're watching famous games.